We are departing our shores in great numbers and the lack of parking at Dublin Airport means local residents around the airport are struggling for parking close to their own homes. Now, to talk to us in more detail, Owen Corey, editor of Air and Travel magazine, and Anne Graves, who's a Sinn Féin councillor for Swords. Good morning and welcome to you both. Um, first of all, Owen, we'll go to you first to get the overall picture. Uh, numbers are high at the airport and car parking availability is low. That's pretty much it. We're missing 6,000 spaces. There were, if listeners will be familiar with Quick Park and Santry, it were closed and never reopened after the pandemic. The most frustrating part about this, Pat, is that uh, there's a will to get um, those spaces up and running. Um, Dublin Airport have offered to buy it and they say within one week they have the buses and the apps and everything they can get that those park, park, car parking spaces uh, back up and running. Uh, there's a competition issue. Uh, There are other people who've also said, yes, we'll be in the business of providing parking, but the way of doing it isn't clear. It's just run into that Mm. sort of bureaucratic fuddle, which is no use to everyone. I mean, the competition issue, DAA have actually bought, in theory, the car park from Quick Park, but it's been held up by these uh, competitive uh, issues. And for some reason, the people who own Quick Park are unwilling to sell or to rent, rather, the available spaces to Dublin Airport for the summer. Yeah, and we're running into the busiest weekend, the last weekend, July, first weekend in August. They are the busiest days. Um, car parking, car park booking has been, you know, it has been possible. People have been booking a week, 10 days out. But what you're running into is an increasing number of dates are blocked out. Uh, no, you can't book in advance. And it's a big deal then taking a chance of driving up to the airport, uh, hoping that you'll be able to pick up a ticket. It's also, you know, it's also more expensive because the special offers we used to have and we had more. Uh, we had a, we had genuine competition between DA and Quake Park, uh, and there were good, you know, decent prices to be got, not cheap prices. But it is very expensive at the moment. Now, meantime, people are leaving. However, they get there. I mean, DA has pointed out that they've been talking to the bus providers, and there are more services to the airport uh, by bus. But whatever about arriving by train, um, arriving by bus with all your books and your baggage and all the rest of it is not the best solution really to mass travel. It, it's working quite well because we have a good range of bus service. They're not expensive. Um, we have the main ones, the Dublin Bus, Bus Air and uh, the City Links, the uh, Air Coach. There are nine of them in all. Uh, the Airport Hopper, which was the last to get up and running, runs for uh, Tala and it runs for Minute. So the, the services are, are not bad. As you say, it gets complicated if you've got wheelchairs, if you've got children, if you've got uh, lots of bags to get on board. But uh, the real other problem is that uh, people arriving uh, in Dublin Airport they, they, every other airport has a metro it's sort of an assumption it's an assumption I make myself when you land in a capital city airport that there are uh, tra- there are public transport services that work and the ones out at Dublin Airport well a bit of local knowledge gets people through them uh, for people who are only going on holidays for the first time in three years it takes an awful lot of working your head around how to get the public transport to and from Dublin Airport yeah And as I say, uh, buses, especially if you're coming from somewhere and you have to load your baggage into the hold of the bus and then wait for it to come out, hopefully it's still there if there have been a number of stops along the way. It's... It's a little and bit there's fraught. a charge. There's an extra charge for extra bags as well, as as everything works in this way. So it can, you know, it, it can get complicated. The taxi issue is a separate drama. Uh, you, we've been talking about this before, and uh, again, the way of sorting that out seems to be clearer than the. Uh, sorry, the will to sort it out is there, but the way of doing it is not as clear. Uh, there, there really has to be pre-booking. Uh, facilities for families at Dublin Airport, but it's a complicated business. There are three different taxi unions. Uh, taxi drivers have great uh, time for it. They've done a terrific service for it and they've had to deal with an awful lot of terrible bureaucracy at Dublin Airport down the years. Uh, but again, uh, the system is unnecessarily convoluted uh, in an era when uh, an awful lot of airports are allowing Uber and uh, yeah. uh, pickups of, of all sorts. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I... Um, was in Charles de Gaulle a couple of years ago and, and you know you arrive and you can call an Uber and there's a place where your Uber will pick you up. 
That's right. Uh, it's controversial, obviously. I was involved in a massive blockade in Madrid a couple of years ago by, over, by taxi drivers over this issue. But everything is negotiable. Uh, you know, that's what you know, aviation is. There's unions for everything and there's negotiations for everything. The real problem seems to be the sticking points for, um, for since the pandemic, the actual way of working around those bureaucratic holes and things like that, they, the obstinacy that we're dealing with uh, doesn't seem to have been oiled up uh, fast enough for this. Owen, there's a text from uh, a listener who says it would be a huge mistake if the DA was to be allowed to open the Quick Park car park. Prices have nearly doubled since Quick Park has closed. Has it become more expensive for the DA to operate a bit of tarmac and some barriers? Uh, You might explain what they're doing. They're trying to, to price demand, isn't that it? The higher the demand, the higher the price to try and reduce the demand. Whereas if they have the 6,000 extra spaces, um, they'd be able to satisfy the demand. And they say, they say, DAA, that the prices would actually fall. Yeah, it's a it's a pretty raw supply and demand situation. Uh, I mean, there's always every time DA say anything, there's always a suspicion there's a back agenda, back, you know, going on there that there's some uh, they're trying to shake people down for money. They're pretty upfront on this. Uh, Kenny Jacobs uh, has comes from a low cost uh, airport environment where uh, capacity is what price it drives down prices. You know, I always argue, and what we learned in college was that competition was the primary driver of. Uh, bringing prices down. Michael O'Leary would hold very strongly that uh, he would, capacity is what brings prices down. He'd actually compete with himself on some routes and uh, being able to offer lower fares as a result of that. Now what what uh, Dublin Airport are running uh, are doing is um, they have this capacity problem. The prices, it's not that so much that the prices have gone up. It's just that the special offers, you used to be able to go to a seven euro a day car park and get it for 420 or something by booking in advance mm. all the little extra incentives that were there people were good at working that gaming that system it's not possible to oh. game it and that uh, stay that stay in the car park while you're going on holidays yeah. it's now become more expensive right. Owen thank you very much for joining us Owen Corey editor of Air and Travel Magazine